Fungi are said to have evolved around 1500 million years ago during the Mesoproterozoic era, even though the first fossils are from around 480 million years ago. Fungi are classified within a group called Opisthoconts, which is within a supergroup called Uniconta. Generally speaking, when we think of fungi, we think of decomposers or saprophytes, organisms that consume dead matter. But fungi can also be classified as parasites, organisms that use a host to its advantage, or mutualists, where the host and the fungi coexist and benefit from the relationship. In terms of decomposing, fungi function sort of like an inside-out stomach, releasing enzymes that break down the dead stuff around them and once they're in smaller parts, absorbing them. Parasitic fungi pretty much do the same thing, but they use live tissues for a food source rather than dead tissue. Mutualistic relationships tend to vary by situation, an example being fungi that may act as the roots of a plant. This is an association known as mycorrhizae, which we'll get into later. When we think of fungi, we usually think of palm-sized mushrooms, but the reality is that fungi come in literally all shapes and sizes, ranging anywhere from microscopic unicellular yeast to honey mushrooms that are kilometers in length. The two most common body structures in fungi are multicellular filaments and unicellular fungi, also called yeasts. In multicellular fungi, there are tons of tiny thread-like tubes called hyphae, which grow into networks of branches called mycelium. Hyphae can be considered the highway inside the fungi. Instead of groups of cells assembled into tissue, the hyphae acts as a long, thread-like filament with all the organelles moving around. They hold the digestive enzymes used for absorbing nutrients and have a tubular cell wall made of chitin, a completely different structure than the cells in plants and animals since it acts as more of a tube than a cell, really. Depending on the type of fungi, the hyphae may or may not be divided further into smaller cells with pores for fluid movement of organelles. The thing that divides the hyphae into cells are called septa, or cross walls. A particular example of a fungi that doesn't have these walls are the cenocytic fungi. Instead, a cenocyte has a long body of cytoplasm holding lots of nuclei and organelles. In some parasitic or mutualistic fungi, the hyphae are specialized so that they can dig into the tissue of their host. These specialized hyphae are called hostoria. Unicellular fungi are somewhat reminiscent of plant cells, but with cell walls made of chitin as opposed to cellulose. They have large vacuoles for water storage in the center of the cell, as well as granules for food storage. In terms of ecology, fungi live just about everywhere, in all conditions, because of their huge variety. Species from the same phylum under fungi generally have the same range of habitats. As decomposers, they essentially recycle nutrients from dead organisms so that they can be used again. We talked about how they do this earlier, by releasing enzymes to break down dead plants and animals, and then absorbing the smaller, more manageable nutrients. Earlier, we talked about fungal relationships. Some can be mutualistic, and others can be parasitic. Fungi tend to have mutualistic relationships with plants, algae, cyanobacteria, and animals. An example is mycorrhizae, a common symbiotic relationship between fungi and plant roots. It's observed in a wide variety of plants, including ferns, mosses, and in crops like peas, tomatoes, onions, apples, and strawberries, as well as wild plant communities. In some cases, the plant can't get enough nutrients without a microcorrhizal relationship. The plant gets enough nutrients, minerals, and water through the hyphae of the fungus to maintain homeostasis, and the fungus gets to keep some of the sugars the plant makes. Also, plants hold endophytes, or fungi that don't cause disease, in their leaves or other plant organs. These endophytes create toxins that ward off herbivores and kill off pathogens that might be harmful to the plant. Another important relationship to note is the lichen, a symbiotic relationship between photosynthetic organisms like algae or cyanobacteria and fungi. Fungi can't conduct photosynthesis, so they rely on photosynthetic partners such as cyanobacteria and algae to provide them with nourishment that they need. In relation to animals, some fungi carry out symbiotic relationships in the digestive tract by breaking down plant material and grazing animals. This is extremely important because herbivores cannot digest cellulose from plants, so fungi living in their digestive tract can break down the cellulose for the animals in return for some of the nutrients in the plant material. Another example of symbiosis, interestingly enough, is between fungi and insects. The mound-building termites from Africa and Asia and the Central and South American leaf-cutting ants developed a resourceful way to use cellulose-rich plant material. These ants actually deliberately grow cellulolytic fungi in underground gardens by establishing pure cultures of the fungi in question. They remove any sources of contamination from their gardens by getting rid of foreign fungi. 
and feed the fungi an adequate amount of nutrients in the form of plant material and moisture. So far, we have only talked about the positive interactions that fungi have with other organisms, but we have to remember the parasitic fungi, an example being Ceratocystis fungaciarum, which kills oak trees by infecting them with oak wilt. Once a single oak tree is affected, the disease can spread rapidly. It usually kills a healthy tree within a year, and the intertwined roots of the trees only help the fungus spread faster. Outside the natural world, people have found many uses for fungi. We have mastered the fermentation process by creating various food products like cheese, bread, yogurt, and alcohol products. In addition, we cultivate fungi to create antibiotics and drugs, including the molds used in penicillin. Fungi are everywhere. They feast off dead things, but without them, we wouldn't be alive. So the lesson here is to respect your mold and mushrooms because they'll probably be decomposing you one day.